Hey now, this video is brought to you by Unity. Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush, I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. If you guys want to take a look at those games in the links in the description, feel free. That would really mean a lot to me. I've been making games for 10 years, specifically 2D games. I've kind of mastered 2D. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit proud, but it's been 10 years. I feel like I've done a pretty good job getting to know 2D. And now I want to take the leap into 3D. Surprise, surprise, there's a ton of variables that you just didn't expect moving into 3D. But that's okay because Unity, they know this. Um, they've actually created something called Snaps in the Unity Asset Store. These are great assets that you can use to bridge the gap between 2D and 3D. And I wanna jump into Unity and show you how easy it is to install Snaps and get started. Now the really cool thing with Snaps is that it actually works out of the box with ProGrids and also ProBuilder. For those of you who don't know, ProBuilder is basically a distilled version of Blender inside of Unity. Now this is amazing because you can manipulate meshes, change the materials, and create your own 3D models from scratch, or if you want to, manipulate the Snaps models inside of Unity. Oh, snap! I almost forgot the most important part of this video. You can get 50% off your snaps pack using the promo code SNAPS50OFF. Be careful though, this ends November 2nd, 2019, so click the link in the description to go ahead and get your promo code used up now, okay? All right, <laughs> let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new 3D project, and I've just put a giant quad on the floor, um, and I've positioned it at zero, and the first thing we wanna do is just make sure that we have the right tools installed. So make sure you go to Window, Package Manager, and check to see that Pro Builder is currently installed. If it's not, click on Pro Builder, and then just go ahead and click Install. You wanna click on Advanced, click on Show Preview Packages, and you will see ProGrids show up. So click on that and just make sure you install that as well. Once those are installed, if you click on Tools, you'll see ProGrids show up here and also ProBuilder. So let's open up our ProBuilder window, and we're gonna be using this later in this tutorial. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller there. And then we're gonna also click on ProGrids and then show the ProGrids window. I'm not gonna do a huge detailed tutorial on ProGrids. Just know that when ProGrids is on, it helps us lay out our snaps assets a lot easier. Everything snaps into place. There's no clipping. There's no struggle with understanding the exact position of certain assets. You can just simply drag and drop and they snap into place. First thing we're gonna do is just position this quad at negative two and you can see that it's perfectly aligned with our grid and we can move it up and down, left and right, and you can see that it's slowly snapping into place. To better demonstrate this, let's go ahead and install a Snaps Asset Pack from the Asset Store to show how we can drag and drop and snap these into place. So let's go to our Asset Store tab, that's at Window, Asset Store, and it's gonna connect to the Asset Store and we can click on the Search for Assets and we're gonna type in Snaps, not Snaz, Snaps. <laughs> click on that. And you'll see a ton of different Snaps asset packs available to us. And if you're not sure which ones were made by Unity, just look for the Unity logo in the thumbnail. And you'll see we have Snaps prototypes that are free. We have a Sci-Fi one, we have Office one, and we have some that aren't free, they're 10 bucks, Asian Residential, Construction, and the list goes on and on. Those are prototype ones. There's also art ones that are more industry standard commercial game. And then also you have HD art, which is obviously high definition, much more detailed, kind of like a triple A type game. We're gonna go ahead and import my favorite one, the Snaps Prototype European Village one. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I've already imported it, but what you're gonna wanna do is click this giant pink button here and click import. And you're just gonna wanna import every single portion of that asset pack. So we've already installed that. So we're gonna to go to our scene view here and I'm gonna show you what was imported into our scene. So we're gonna collapse asset store originals. Then we're gonna collapse snaps prototyping assets. And you're going to see Valencia village folder right here. Don't worry about this about folder or the scripts folder right now. What we're gonna look at is the Valencia village folder here. And right off the bat, you can see we have three folders props. Snaps, no HD, which these are our buildings, and then we have structures, which is all the different parts of buildings 
um, so that you could create walls and doors and windows. The list is just massive. So instead of just showing each one of these one by one, I'm actually gonna open up the sample scenes here and I'm gonna show you really quickly the Valencia Village prefab scene. So let's save our current scene here and open up the prefab scene just so we can get an idea of all the prefabs that were just installed in our scene. This is pretty amazing how many um, assets and models were given to us in this one little pack. So this allows us to quickly lay out a prototype or it doesn't necessarily have to be a prototype, it could be an actual game. There are plenty of commercially released games that have actually used the Snaps Asset Packs. So you can see that the uh, assets here are actually pretty low poly, very generic, very simplistic. Um, but believe it or not, for indie game devs, low poly is kind of popular. It's kind of the thing, so I wouldn't worry too much about making your game look too detailed. I think these assets look great. So there's just a ton of things here um, to sort through and pick out to create your scene. So now let's jump back into the scene I was just in, and we're calling that the village level. It's just a basic quad here. And right off the bat, I wanna show you how we can just simply drag and drop buildings into our scene. So as you can see it, it's quickly snapping into place so we can just snap it all the way down to here so that the door is aligned with the ground. And we can do it again and again and again and have all kinds of different buildings. And so you can see why it's important to have the grid um, helping us out here because we can actually just drag and everything is aligned properly along the same grid line, just right along there. Um, so it keeps things clean, it keeps prototyping really quick and easy. Um, and there's more than just buildings guys obviously there's plenty of other things that you can drag and drop into your scene but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a simple row of buildings here and then end it with this giant church so we have this church we have these buildings and finally what I want to do is let's just throw in a first person controller the first person controller is actually available with standard assets on the asset store um, so you can just jump on the asset store and install the standard assets pack and it's going to give you a first person controller so I'm going to drag this here I'm going to delete the camera that was given to us by default because the first person controller actually already has a camera in it and we're going to hit play here we are so as you can see we've already created pretty much the very first few buildings of our European village very cool um, and I wanna stress the importance of prototyping here, guys. Instead of creating a highly detailed world and really focusing on how things look, you really should care about how things feel from a gameplay perspective first. So that's why these prototyping assets are so important. It allows us to prototype out a level and maybe pass it on to different team members or maybe in my case, just you know, test it for myself um, before I start actually solidifying the artwork. So those are the prefabs available and models available to us in the asset pack. Now, obviously there's other kinds of villages that you can do as well. There's Asian villages, there's, there's sci-fi, there's offices, um, there's construction packs. There's all sorts of different prefabs available to us on the asset store. So let me show you what it can really look like. So there's some sample scenes available to us in the Valencia Village folder here. And we can double click on the sample layout. Go ahead and save our village level. And let's jump into the sample layout that was given to us by Unity. So this is what it looks like. This is what you can do with it. Let's hit play and see how it feels. So ultimately, you know, with a couple hours of work, maybe maybe three hours, who knows, you could put together a, really quickly um, a prototype scene um, for your village. You have a restaurant, you can have all these different umbrellas, and you'll notice that everything has colliders attached to it. So I can't like walk through the walls or anything. You'll notice that the scale of everything looks normal. It does. Some things aren't too big or too small. Everything feels like a real world scale. And I think that's the really important part about snaps. Everything is built to scale. Um, and everything looks good relative to one another. That's also what's really cool about Pro Grids is Pro Grids allows us to move everything around and snap everything in place relative to the location and size of everything else. So everything is uniform, everything is clean and organized. That's pretty cool. Now you can also change the color of the prefabs. So if I wanted to, I could change this red umbrella to 
a green umbrella and then this to this green umbrella to a purple umbrella but a better way to do it instead of changing this green material to purple that's kind of confusing what you can do is simply just drag and drop the materials that have been provided to you in this Valencia Village materials folder to the prefab. So where this red is here, let's actually just swap it out with teal. Or actually, let's do this. Let's just swap it out with the green. And for this one, maybe we wanna make it blue, so let's just swap it out with the blue. And so as you can see, we're able to change the colors by simply dragging and dropping these materials. I like to think of these materials simply as swatches, global swatches that you can use over and over in your scene. So we have our buildings here, but what if I wanted to make these buildings look a little bit different? Like for example, what if I wanted a chimney coming out of this roof? Well, believe it or not, we can actually edit these models inside of Unity. One of the most daunting things to a 2D developer um, is realizing that if they want to move to 3D, they have to learn a whole new tool like Blender or other 3D softwares. Now, this is really cool because we actually have something called Pro Builder. To show the Pro Builder tab, you just have to go to Tools, Pro Builder, Pro Builder Window. And this is going to give us all of the tools we need to make edits to pretty much anything in any model within the Snaps Pack that you download. Now, these tools up here are related to Pro Builder. You can click this and that's going to select an object. This is your vertices selection, so I can select certain vertices and scale them up like this and make a really pointy building if we wanted to. So as you can see, we've totally ruined our model, but that's totally fine because we're having fun in this tutorial. And again, with this tutorial, guys, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty specifics of Pro Builder, but there are just a few quick tricks you can do here. You can extrude by holding shift and then pulling, and you can see that we're actually extruding out new faces. Um, this is a common practice in, inside of tools like Blender. So we can just build out <laughs> a ridiculously weird looking shape, but I think you get the idea of how this is incredibly valuable. Um, I could do an extrusion coming out of here and up, <laughs> up to there. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and that's just with the extrusion tool. Now in all seriousness, we could actually make a chimney and we could do all sorts of different edits that are reasonable um, to this uh, building here. So let's first off, let's actually just create, I don't know, an additional roof piece on top of this one. So if we wanted to do that, all we would do is select this face here and I like to turn off my Unity Pro Grids snapping while I do edits to my models. But I could select this face here and then we could scale it down holding shift and we're going to sort of inset it a little bit and then I can hold shift again bring it up and hold shift scale it out and hold shift again and move up so as you can see we sort of extended the roof up and we could create a second story if we wanted to obviously there's plenty of different ways to do this I'm just sort of showing you how we can do it really quickly again how we did this is we just hold shift scale down to inset it a little bit hold shift to scale up we could create a whole big tower here and hold shift to scale out and hold shift and scale up again so you can see we have extensions of the buildings here and if we wanted to create a chimney we could certainly edit the actual mesh of this roof by using subdividing sort of subdividing out a square and then extruding out but I definitely would prefer to use a new shape instead. So let's do a new shape. Let's click the plus icon here and we're just gonna create a new cube. So here's our cube and we're gonna just scale it down just a little bit and then make it taller. So using that same line of logic using extrusion, all we're gonna do is select this face here, hold shift, drag out just a little bit. And then something cool you can do is actually select this face here and we're gonna use something called select face ring here. So we're just gonna select the face ring and all that does is select all the faces in the horizontal direction. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna scale it holding shift out just like that. And now all we gotta do is select this inside face here and let's just sort of move it up just a little bit, make it flat and then hold shift and drop it down. Now we have a pretty cool chimney. So what we can do is grab this chimney here 
Let's call it chimney. And we're going to literally just drag it into our prefabs folder. And also let's change the color to brown. So now we have this chimney here. We can just drag and drop this chimney all over the place. So as you can see, you can edit the models themselves or you can create your own models and sort of attach them to the buildings. Believe it or not, these kinds of tools are pretty much all I use when creating 3D games in Blender. Um, being able to change colors, apply different textures and materials, uh, extruding, maybe subdividing, beveling, those kinds of things are for my low poly art style and a lot of indie game low poly art styles, especially developers who go from 2D to 3D, these tools are pretty much all you need. Now obviously there are some things that might you might need that you might need to look up and use in Blender, but I think for the most part, Pro Builder, along with Snaps, is a great way for you to transition from 2D into 3D. Now once you're done prototyping your level, you can certainly head on over to the asset store again and take a look at the Snaps art and also the art HD packs. These are basically commercially ready uh, AAA type models. Now obviously you don't have to go this route. You can make it look low poly if you want or you can look really high definition. Whatever you want for your game is totally fine. So what did you guys think about Snaps? I think it's the perfect bridge going from 2D to 3D. If you found it valuable, click the link in the description and get started with snaps. If you guys found this video valuable, please leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a like, do all those cool things. And remember, you can get a free copy of my game Pinstripe, which was featured by Time Magazine. Ooh, ah. You can get a free copy of that by supporting on Patreon. That would really mean a lot to me. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye, love you.